And we're back uh, from the Volks Hotel in Amsterdam with uh, ThinksCon 2017. All day, all afternoon long, we're doing interviews with uh, people that have been on stage or are walking around here and sharing their knowledge. Um, next up is, uh, is Saskia Fiedler. Um, you're a content strategist and you gave a talk yesterday uh, on what? GDPR for things. You Elaborate on that. Yeah, well, GDPR uh, is the abbreviation, of course, of something the General Data Protection Regulation. And um, that is a new regulation that goes into effect in May 2018. And it's basically like a big European law to protect the privacy of European citizens. And Every company that deals with the personal data of European citizens has to comply to the rules of the GDPR. And uh, as far as I understand, it's, it's, it has a huge impact and uh, most organizations are not really ready for it. That's true. Uh, there's a huge impact for a lot of companies that are, for instance, uh, acquiring or harvesting, as I like to say, personal data for like marketing purposes. Um, and that is often also what they tell you when they ask you for your information. Um, can we keep your email address for marketing purposes? Well, they cannot do that anymore from May 2018. They have to have a really good reason to even ask for your personal data. So uh, when you sign up for a service, very often now they might ask not only your name, but also your birthday and your gender and where you live. But imagine if you're only, if it's only an app, does the app really need to know where you live? Or does it really need to know your gender? And if the answer is no, then you're not even allowed to ask that information. Now, if you do have a good reason to ask for that information, um, then you have to be very clear about that. So you have to be very clear about the fact that you're asking for that information, why you need it, and what you're going to do with that information. And once you've done that in the correct way, you're also not allowed to do anything else with that information. So you can't say like, and now we're going to look at all the mails in Amsterdam and see how they're using our service. That's actually, um, as long as you can um, identify data back to an individual or data subject as they are called in the GDPR terms, which that's a very ugly term, but that's what it is, then, um, then you have to be super careful about it and you have to have a really good reason to ask for that information. Well, as I said, it's, it sounds really massive, but um, um, if it's forbidden to do these kind of things, then there must be an authority that's going to check this. How, how, are you, how on earth are you going to check whether all organizations, because any organization has data of customers, how oh, are you yeah. going to check whether they comply with the rules? Yeah, well, um, that is going to be a surprise for all of us. Like, uh, it's not entirely certain how this is going to happen, but I've spoke to some legal professionals about this too, and they suspect that it will be mainly uh, uh, reactory. So they will uh, react if someone right, comes so to as, them. As a customer, as I a complain customer. about the fact that I yeah. have to list my birthday and I can't understand why, and then yeah. uh, uh, there's some sort of a uh, website where I can go to and say, hey, this is, these are bad guys, check them out. Yes, you could do that. Right. Or if you have the suspicion of your data that you've, like, you've only told this person, this company, this information and you see it popping up somewhere else, mm -hmm. it's also a very bad sign, of course. Um, there will, of course, be uh, like the bigger players, uh, the bigger corporations, they will more easily stand out to the sure. GDPR police. Yeah, the Amazons and the Googles exactly. and Facebook. Yeah. So they will do everything they can to be compliant and that's what they are doing already. For instance, like a lot of these organizations are creating their uh, servers with personal information on European soil because also the data has to be on European soil. <laughs> so that's why a lot of these companies are coming here now. Um, but if you have like a small business or you're even a freelancer and you are providing a service where you're processing personal data, so uh, Google comes to you and tells you like, hey, will you send out our newsletter to these people? then you have to be compliant too, and you have to also com yeah, comply to all the rules. So 
It's going to be a mess. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to be a very messy thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. figures. Um, but we're here at ThinksCon, uh, and ThinksCon subject is basically IoT. So, so what is the relation uh, uh, with IoT? Well, with IoT, the thing is that um, the things, that, the 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 connected things, the smart things are also collecting a lot of our personal information. Maybe they don't know our name, per se, but they might know your device, your MAC address. They, there's a good chance they will know your IP address. Um, or they can check your location, check what kind of device, and with like lots of meta, metadata, think like, mm, this must be this kind of person, that might be this person. So the more specific, um, you can trace a bit of information or collection information back to an individual, you have to be aware of what you can and cannot do in the, under the GDPR law. Um, so yeah, because IoT devices and projects are almost all the time collecting personal information. So how, how, how does it work with, uh, with all the devices? Uh, because you don't throw away all your devices uh, when this law is, uh, is uh, is, is applicable. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and a lot of hardware cannot be programmed over the air. So you got a lot of devices out there already uh, and that are not compliant with these rules um, and cannot be updated uh, over the air or anything. So what happens with them? Are they... You mean, for instance, like your smartphone? For instance, or, or maybe or your I've Nest got some, thermostat. Yeah, or, or maybe I've got some very cheap as uh, uh, connectors in my house that uh, that collect data that I don't even uh, that I'm not even, aware, even of. aware of. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what will happen with those things. Um, I have to say, like, I'm also like a GDPR enthusiast, uh, and I and like really? most so people, they, they exist. They, apparently. <laughs> Is there a group? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but, but like to, to stay on topic of your question, I'm, I'm not sure what will happen with that. There might be devices that can no longer provide their service to you. But then there are a lot of devices, like for instance, the Nest thermostat, that is like a, a product of a very large corporation. There's a good chance that they'll figure out how to fix this. So, you shouldn't, as a customer, you shouldn't be too worried. You don't have to throw things out. And um, yeah, we'll just have to hope that all these companies get their <coughs> shit together and uh, make sure that um, that the way that their product works complies. Yeah. Well, you said you're a kind of an enthusiast. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, GDPR, the GDPR rules are super, super strict and it's not easy to comply to them. But I am also uh, very active as in the UX field. I'm a content strategist, so user experience is like an adjacent field in that. And um, I'm like an advocate of the user in everything that I do. And for a lot of things, there's actually a lot of good aspects of the GDPR. Like I believe that um, privacy is something valu very valuable. Sure. And when you, are start, when you start to use a service and the service asks you for certain information and you don't know why they're asking that, but all these fields have like, you know, the red asterisk added. Mm -hmm. So you have, to, you have to answer it, otherwise you can't use the service. That's also a bit of the, a part of the user experience. Like you as a user don't feel super good about using this service. Oh, I agree on that. I did, I did a lot of e-commerce projects in the past and then when you had to buy a service online and all of a sudden you had to fill out uh, or yeah. a, a non-physical product, but you had to fill out your address. I figured mm -hmm. out, well, this is, doesn't make any sense. Exactly. But um, so there could be a good thing on the user experience, but it could also be a bad thing. I mean, it's going to be, there's it, it, it a possibility that services are, are getting more complicated uh, for the user because they need to comply on various levels and certain data to use, et cetera, et cetera, or, or are you not worried about that? Mm, I'm not too worried about that, to be honest. Um, there will be a peak of annoyance around uh, GDPR the coming months, where every uh, organization and company will send to start, out, start to send out um, these emails about, can we use this information about you, or can you um, give us your information again so we have it in a lawful manner? Um, so that will be annoying. But 
I don't think you as a customer will suffer much from it. I think it will it will be a better experience. Also content-wise, which is more like my feels, like the way that we talk about privacy and personal data will completely change. And we'll have to be super clear about how we are using your data and we will communicate about it more in context. So um, you already see that sometimes when you fill in a form and why are we asking you for this information? And you need sure. some content. So we're in the process of, of doing this. So last yeah. question is, are there some good examples of companies that are already doing this in a perfect manner? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Well, um, for... I know a very good privacy policy that is so well written that I sometimes just read it before I go to sleep because it calms me down. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, that's the one at age.co.uk. It's a website for elderly people. And it's such a beautiful example of what a privacy statement can be. Um, it's so clearly written. Should be, so, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, exactly. All right. Um, so that's a good example content-wise, and then all the, um, the, the, the web services. I'm, I'm mainly in the web business, so I kind of refer to web services now, um, where every time that you, you go through a flow and you see, like, why are you using my data? Um, those are all good examples of that. I don't, off the top of my head, I, I can't think of one specifically, but there are there are many out there already. All right. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, thanks. And Thank uh, you. enjoy uh, reading uh, the privacy uh, pages <laughs> <laughs> before going to sleep. <laughs> thanks for watching again. This is uh, uh, live from ThinksCon 2017 in Amsterdam. Uh, we will be broadcasting all afternoon, uh, so stay tuned. <laughs>